Proverbs chapter 30, verse 23 is where we left off. About the odious woman who is an offensive woman when she is married, and a handmaid that is hair to her mistress. A handmaid is, is no one a family. It's just a servant girl. And then when you get to reading a will, you'll find out that she gets part of the inheritance. There, there be four things which be little upon the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. Okay, four things. They're small, but the wisdom that God has imparted to them. Number one, the ants. Very small little little creatures. And if you watch them, they're interesting. Matter of fact, you can go to hobby stores and toy stores and get little ant farms to watch them. Are a people. That's interesting. They're an insect. Not strong. Yet an ant can carry us. I got, oh, uh, I got about an ant here. It's an insect, six legs, runs very quickly, lift 20 times their weight, they live 45 to 60 days, two jaws which open sideways. Eight, ants cannot chew or swallow solid food. Two eyes that are composed. Composed of similar lens. They have two stomachs. One for themselves and one for the other ants. No bones but an echoskeleton. Uh, then we got the growth stages and all that. There are worker ants and the female. And he didn't go into a big study in ants. But yet they prepare their meat in the summer. They're, what he's referenced the ants to is they're hard workers. And what needs to be done is done. Are a people not strong? Maybe he's comparing people who don't do what the ants do. I don't know. The conies. Number two is a type of rabbit. Are a feeble folk, yet make their homes in the rocks, a safe place. They're feeble, they're weak, but their home is a stronghold. The locusts, number three, have no king, no leader, yet go they forth, all of them by band. So without a king, they work themselves as a soldier unit to do what needs to be done. No ruler. The ants are under a queen. And it's the female ants that work. And they, prepare, they prepare their their food in the summer when, when it's time to gather. The conies are these little bunny rabbit creatures that, you know, every hawk has their eye on them, every rattlesnake buys them and all that, and they build a house in rocks. Well, Jesus said a man that, that adheres to his words like a man who builds his house upon a rock. Here is an animal that builds their house in a rock. The locusts are creatures that devour. They're worse than a storm. They eat, 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 eat. And they won't stop eating until it's all gone. And number four, the spider. Taketh hold with her hands and make her little web. And is in king's palaces. You know, when you read the Bible in certain books, Esther says, I haven't been invited to the king king as a earth. If he doesn't hold out that scepter, if I die, I die. And there were men who were invited into the king's presence. Bathsheba, the wife of the king, waited for David to call her into the throne room. And yet, if you look around the throne room, there may be a little spider somewhere making a little nest. 
and no one ever invited her. Four animals that they're little tiny things, but look at where their stand is. They provide they provide their food. They have a strong home house. They are led without a ruler, and they are in places where others are not to be. There be three things which go well. Yea, four are calmly in going. Number one, a lion which is strongest among the beasts, and turneth not away for any. The lion, we're going to see the animals here of the Antichrist. Now, a lion will run from elephants. Enough elephants. The lion will run from Jesus Christ in the end. But what is a lion's enemy? Not too many. Especially when he's with his pack. And how they can... Uh, be out in a, in a wilderness, in a field, monitoring as a pack, a group of animals, and without radio, without telephone, they can, they can uh, talk to each other, communicate, and find out which animal they're going to attack. And there's not too many animals that will surprise a lion, but man, the great animal. Uh, Paul speaks about our adversary, the devil. We're not ignorant of his devices. But don't you think Satan's going to run from you? I don't care if you got the word of God. He is more into the word of God than we are. He's seen the one that wrote the word of God. We haven't. The greyhound. And he goes, and you see that in Daniel 8, 21, as the Antichrist, also. And a king, against whom there is no rising up. He wants you put down. You're down. I have no, I guess it's not here. I don't know what the lions will eat. There's particular bones that a lion will break. You're not going to get up. A king in war, he's going to take you down and you're not going to get up. When the Antichrist takes you down, you ain't going to get up. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, pride, take out a new, a new paragraph, Haughtiness, loftiness, if thou hast thought evil, thought evil, thought, not do evil, thought, get that. If I can get any Christian to realize that their thoughts, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Don't go speaking. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth birth, uh, butter. You know, there's a churning you know, up and down, up and down. That's going to bring forth butter. The wrinkling, which is a twisting of the nose, bringing forth blood. I mean, when you grab someone's nose and you twist it, you're going to get a nosebleed. Butter comes from churning. Blood comes from twisting the nose. So the forcing of wrath. Keep Fueling wrath. Keep it going. Keep it alive. Bring it forth strife as butter and as blood. Listen, if you stop churning and don't do it again, you're not going to get the butter. If you don't go up and twist somebody's nose, you're not going to get a nosebleed. Don't continue in wrath. Because wrath will be strife. Don't be in your, your foolishness of, of, of pride, of loftiness. Adhere to the, to the animals that God has put on this planet and take note of them. 
go out there and plant your crops and harvest them. Winter's coming. Get yourself a nice, safe home. The littlest things you'll do, though unnoticed by all, you are in the king's palace of God. I mean, you may think you, you pass out one gospel track, whatever you do, you just pray for somebody in a hospital or something, whatever you do, is being recognized in the, in the holy royal throne of God. The lion is the strongest beast. He is your adversary. He's the devil. And he's not going to run from you. And I sat under a, pre a preacher that would, would, would challenge Satan. Old smutty face and all that. And his ministry is broken down. You be foolish. A great hound and he go also in a king. Also whom there is no rising up. You know. You don't want to be defeated. Uh, it said in Proverbs that we studied. If, if thou faint thy, thy, thy faith is small. Don't go tangling up against those that you don't need to be tangling up against. Stick to what God has you to do. Don't lift yourself up. Don't get into pride. And let wrath go away. Don't fuel it. As we close off with Agar and all the wonderful things he's had to say, we close.